In this video, I'm going to show you how to record your computer screen with a voiceover the new way using the new screenshot application in macOS Catalina. You know, today's Macs come bundled with great video creation tools right out of the box. You can record video, audio, even record your Mac screen. But how you record your screen changed somewhat drastically in Mac OS 10.15, also known as Catalina. To record your screen in previous Mac operating systems, you used QuickTime Player. In Catalina, screen capture and screen recording have been consolidated into a new application called ScreenShot. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use ScreenShot to record your screen with a voiceover. Let's jump in. So here we are on my Mac. I'm running Mac OS Catalina 10.15.3 for this tutorial. And I have this iMovie project open here. So let's say I want to record a tutorial using this iMovie project. Well, obviously to do that, I need to record my screen. And to do that, I'll use the new ScreenShot application. Now you can launch ScreenShot a few different ways. The quickest way is to use the keyboard shortcut Shift Command 5 and up pops the screenshot recording interface down here and you can see that my cursor has changed into this camera icon. To exit screenshot, just hit the escape key. Another way to launch screenshot is to go up to the little magnifying glass in the top menu, spotlight search, select it, and then in the search field, start typing screenshot. And screenshot should appear at the top of the list double click it and screenshot launches. I'll hit escape to get out of screenshot again. Another way to launch screenshot is actually through QuickTime Player. So I'm just going to bring up QuickTime Player by command tabbing over to it. And with QuickTime Player open, you go up to the top menu here in QuickTime Player and select file new screen recording and the screenshot interface opens again. So even if you use QuickTime Player to record your screen, it's going to open screenshot to do the job. Now I could record my screen right now here through QuickTime Player, but I'm not gonna do it through QuickTime Player. Launching screenshot on its own using the keyboard shortcut or through spotlight search gives me more options, which you'll see later. So I'm going to close out of the screenshot interface here in QuickTime Player by hitting the escape key. And I'll launch screenshot again, this time using the keyboard shortcut Shift Command 5. And screenshot launches. All right, let's take a quick look at the interface down here. This set of buttons on the left are for capturing still images of your screen. What we're interested in are these buttons over here. These buttons are for recording a video of your screen. Select this button and you can record your entire screen. Select this next button and you can record a portion of your screen by clicking and dragging the handles on this selection box. If you change your mind and want to go back to recording the entire screen, just select the record entire screen button. Next to the record buttons, we have the options button. And when we click that, we get this menu of options. At the top, we can select a location to save our screen recording when we're done. I'm going to select the desktop for my destination. And unfortunately, the options window closes, which means in order to choose more options, I have to open it up again. A little inconvenient. This section here called timer is where you can set a timer to count down to the start of your screen recording. You can have a five second countdown or a 10 second countdown. I'm going to select a five second countdown. And again, the options window closes and I have to click it to open it again. Now here's where you select the microphone you want to use if you're recording a voiceover with your screen recording. I'm going to put the brakes on for a moment here because I want to quickly talk about microphones for recording your voiceover in ScreenShot. USB mics work just fine, but if you plan to use an XLR microphone connected to a USB audio interface to record your voiceover in ScreenShot, you're going to run into an issue. 
when you play back your recording, you're going to hear your voiceover out of the left speaker only. Now, I'm not going to go into why this happens in this video. I have a couple of videos that explain why it happens and how to fix it after the fact. I'll link to those videos down in the description. If you want to use an XLR microphone while recording in screenshot, you'll need to connect your XLR mic to a mixer that allows you to switch your mic's output to mono or allows you to mix the left and right channel output together, like this Yamaha AG03 USB mixer. I'll leave a link to that mixer in the description below as well, if you're interested. All right, back to the tutorial. I have a USB microphone connected to my Mac, the Rode NT-USB, so I'll select that to use for my voiceover. You can also use the built-in microphone if you want to, but the sound quality won't be the greatest. So I'll select my Rode NT-USB. Now once you select your microphone, it's a good idea to set your microphone's input level, so you can get a good quality recording. To do that, I'll first hit the escape key to get out of screenshot. Then I'll go up to the Apple menu at the top bar here, select it, and from the menu select System Preferences. I'll go to the Sound section. I'll select my microphone, the Rode NT-USB, and make sure Input is selected. Then I'm going to speak into the microphone at the level I'll use while recording and adjust this slider here to get a good recording level. Now, you don't want to have your level be too high. You don't want it sitting in this end area for too long or else the sound will be distorted. Not very pleasant for your audience. Okay, with my microphone level set, I will close out of the sound panel in System Preferences. Then I'll launch Screenshot again by hitting the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-5. And Screenshot launches. Now, here's an issue I have with the new Screenshot application. I've selected a microphone for my voiceover, but I have no idea if my mic audio is being picked up by Screenshot. The old way of recording your screen, using QuickTime Player, you had an audio meter. You could confirm that your microphone signal was coming in. With Screenshot, you have no indication. There is no audio meter. So you may want to do a test recording before starting your actual project to confirm your mic signal is being recorded. All right, I'm gonna go back to the screenshot options here. And let's look at this area down here in the menu. Starting from the bottom, if you select show mouse clicks, you'll get a little on-screen animation around your cursor whenever you click the mouse. It can be useful for helping viewers follow your cursor actions. Remember last selection remembers the last selection you made on the screen when you used the record selected portion button here. So it remembers this selection area. This is handy if you need to do multiple takes of your recording and don't want to have to reset your selection area for each and every take. I'll go back to the options menu. And then at the top of this options menu, we have show floating thumbnail. I'll show you what this does in a moment. In the meantime, I'll leave this selected. All right, with my options all set, I can record my screen. Now I want to record my entire screen, so I'll make sure record entire screen is selected. And to start recording, I can select the record button here or I can just click on the screen, which I'll do. And we see the little five second countdown down here. And if you hover over this, you can cancel. And I'm recording. And I know I'm recording because of this stop button icon on the top menu bar here. When it's solid, it means you're recording. So now I can go ahead and deliver my content. To fix this video, I'm going to click and drag to select all the media in the timeline. Then I'm going to go up to the top toolbar above the preview window and select the cropping tool. And then I'll go to the right and select rotate the clip clockwise. 
and now all of my vertical media has been rotated clockwise 90 degrees. But more importantly, my vertical media now fills the screen. There are no black bars on the side. It takes up all the resolution. Okay, I'm done recording this little screen tutorial. So when you're done recording, to stop recording, you just go up to the top bar here again and click this stop icon. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut, command, control, escape. I'm just gonna click the little button here. And as soon as I stop recording, this thumbnail appears in the lower right corner of the screen. This thumbnail appears because I had Show Floating Thumbnail checked in the screenshot options. Now this thumbnail only appears on screen for three seconds or so. After that, it slides off screen, at which point you can find your screen recording in the location you set in the Save To settings in the screenshot options. In my case, the desktop. But if I right click or control click the thumbnail before it leaves the screen, I get this menu of options. Now you only get this menu when you launch Screenshot directly. If you open Screenshot through QuickTime Player, when you stop recording, your recording pops up in the standard QuickTime Player window. You won't have access to these additional options. Let's take a look at these options. You have all these actions that you can take with your screen recording. You can even open it up in QuickTime Player. But the one I want to show you is this one down here, called Markup. If I select that, my screen opens up into this separate interface called Quick Look. Now I should mention that you can get to this Quick Look interface directly by just left-clicking the thumbnail before it disappears. So taking a closer look at this quick look interface, I can see I can do several things here with my screen recording. I can play it, for example. And I'm recording. And I know I'm recording because of... And you can hear my voice. Button icon and you can see the on-screen actions. When it's solid, it means you're recording. I can share it using the share function over here. I can play it on another device using AirPlay. Looking at the top of the Quick Look interface, I can delete my screen recording by selecting this trash can button. But what's really cool is this button right over here. If I select this button, it opens up a trimming interface. And now I can trim the beginning and the end of my screen recording. And I can play back my trimmed recording using this play button over here on the left. Stop button icon on the top menu bar here. When it's solid, it means you're recording. So now I can go ahead and deliver my... This is the same trimming interface you would find in QuickTime Player and iOS. When I'm finished trimming, I can go up to the top of the Quick Look interface and select the Done button. And the Quick Look interface closes, and my trimmed screen recording is saved to the location I set in the Save To settings in the Screenshot Options menu. In this case, the desktop. So I'll go over and find it. It's right here. I'll open it up in QuickTime Player. And then I can play my trimmed screen recording. Stop button icon on the top menu bar here. When it's solid, it means you're recording. So now I can go ahead and deliver my content. So with Screenshot, you have a couple of different options for quickly editing your screen recording. You can do a quick trim using the Quick Look interface, or you can open your screen recording in QuickTime Player, where you have a few more basic editing options. If you want to know how to edit things like screen recordings or other videos using just QuickTime Player, have a look at this video on my channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.